that we can use a reaction mechanism to come up with the rate law expression for a given reaction. So remember, when we do this, we need to be very specific about what kind of reaction mechanisms we have or what elementary processes are in that reaction mechanism. So the first one we did was a two-step one, a slow step followed by a fast step. And here we're going to be looking also at a two-step mechanism, but the first step is going to be fast and reversible, and then the second step is going to be a slow step. And that's going to change up how we're going to attack this problem. So here I give you a reaction. Once again, we, we kind of need to know what the reaction is. We want to know where we're starting at and where we're going. And I'm telling you that the reaction mechanism is made up of two steps. So there's two elementary processes. So the first step is fast. And this is a reversible step. So that means that there's actually two reactions kind of going on at the same time. NO is going to N2O2. And then N2O2 is going back to um, NO. And that for each of these directions, there is a k value uh, for it. So here, NO going to N2O2, that forward reaction, the k or the rate constant is k1. Going uh, in reverse, the k constant is k2. So in the second step, it's a slow step. Um, it's not reversible, but the k constant for this is 3. And because it's slow, we know that k3 is much smaller than k1 and k2. So that's kind of a given there. So what we're going to find out is the slow step tends to be the rate determining step. And so this is the one where we're going to start off with in terms of um, what's our rate law expression for this overall reaction. But we're going to see having it in this second step is going to provide some problems that we're going to deal with. Before we move on, it's always nice to say what's the intermediate. As an exam writer, I always like asking this question. And remember, the definition of an intermediate is a uh, species that is made and used up in the mechanism. It's part of the mechanism, but it's not part of the reaction. So really, it's like saying, what species inside of my mechanism sh is there, but it's not in my mechanism. And when I look at that, N2O2 is part of my mechanism, but it's not part of my overall reaction. So that is our intermediate. It's being used up, made and used up inside of the mechanism. And this is going to be important because our um, intermediate is going to show up again here in just a second, give us some problems. So with this, we know we know that the second step is going to be the rate determining step because it's slow and also because it is an elementary process I can come up with a rate law expression for step two just by looking at the stoichiometry so rate is equal to K3 now times the concentration of reactants and there's no stoichiometry so there's implied one so this is my rate law expression for the second step, the slow step. But there's a problem in this that this rate law expression actually involves our intermediate. And our intermediate is really not a reactant. We want our, our rate law expression to only involve reactants. So this is where we're going to involve step one. We need to get rid of this intermediate inside of our rate law expression. But this is where we start because we know step two is going to be the rate determining step. That is where we start. So with this now, we want to find out how N2O2 relates to our other reactants. So with that, we want to go to our first step. And in an equilibrium, if we're at an equilibrium, so we're taking that for granted, that the rate of the forward reaction must equal the rate of the reverse reaction. So this is, once again, an elementary process. So the rate going forward, I can use the stoichiometry to come up with a rate law expression for it. So uh, K1, that's our forward reaction, times the concentration of my reactants, and uh, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So this 2 is this 2 here. And the same thing for the reverse reaction. Rate is equal to K. So in this case, the reverse reaction is K2, uh, times my, my reactant for the reverse reaction is my N2O2. So here to get started, we are going to want to isolate N2O2. So this is the species that we want to get rid of in our um, rate law expression and, and we start out by um, just kind of moving things around so K2 comes down here the concentration and NO squared comes down here and just to make our lives a little easier we're going to say that K1 divided by K2 is equal to K4 so that's just to make the numbers a real a little bit easier and inside of this expression, so this original run, really what we're trying to find is the concentration of N2O2 so if I look at this uh, the concentration 
is equal to K1 divided by K2 times the concentration of NO squared, or uh, more simply K4 times NO squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value the, um, and, and plug it into my rate law expression. So we're going to plug it in right here in our rate law expression for our rate determining step. And what we end up getting is that rate is equal to um, K3 times K4 times our concentration of O2 squared, and that is also going to be multiplied by O2. So finally, what we say is we, we don't want multiple Ks in here. We just say rate is equal to K to the reaction times a concentration of NO2 squared times concentration of O2. So this came from the substitution we needed to get rid of into O2, and we did that by um, doing some algebra with our first step and substituting in and now we have a rate law expression that only uses our um, reactants, and that's where we end up at. And then we take a second to remember that K reaction, we only really only want K, one K, but K reaction comes from all three of the K values that we had in our reaction mechanism. So K reaction is equal to K3 times K4, and then remember we made a substitution that K4 is equal to K1 divided by K2. So the overall K for this reaction is involving all the K values in, uh, inside of our reaction mechanism.